Hi everyone, my name is Mitchell Hora with Continual Mag. Today we're going to be looking through the Haney Soil Health Test coming back from Brookside Labs. Just a quick overview of how to read the test, how to interpret it. So when I get the test back from Brookside, I email it out to my growers. It looks like this report on my computer. For today's purposes, all I did was print it off so we can more easily follow along. So when I get this report back from Brookside, um, at the top here, it's got my company um, as submitted by, and then uh, just some info about the sample ID, sample location. This should correlate with any maps of the field that you have. The big difference with the Haney test, um, one is that it uses a different extraction than our typical testing. It uses a weak acid extraction that is more representative of what's available to the plant. So this report today, we're really just looking at a snapshot. What is available to the roots today? We're looking at not only N, P, and K and micronutrients, but we're also looking at our microbial activity, soil biology, um, the food really that is available for the microbes. So when you get this report back, um, over on the right side, you'll see that N, P, and K and micronutrients. I like this test because it breaks it down into nitrate, ammonium, and our estimated biological nitrogen. So we're breaking that nitrogen down and able to better monitor what form our nitrogen is in. So monitoring that uh, NP and K throughout the year has been really helpful to us. We can get that from our regular soil testing. The difference here with the Haney test now is the soil health factors that are up here in the corner. So part of that, we're looking at the Solvita CO2 burst. The Solvita CO2 burst is essentially a number that is representative of the amount of biology that is active in the soil. What they do is they take a cup of soil, a set amount, and they dry it down and then re-wet it with a set amount of water and collect the CO2 that is emitted in a 24 hour period. The more CO2 emitted, the more active the soil is, the more biology that's in the soil. And that's uh, given a ranking up here at the very top. The next parameter is water extractable organic carbon. Essentially, this is the food for the microbes. This test doesn't look at organic matter um, because organic matter is the home for the microbes, it's its house, but the organic carbon is really the food. You can have a big house with not very much food and you won't be able to really sustain that much life. Or it doesn't really matter how big your house is, if you have a lot of food, then you can really get the microbes going. In order to break down the carbon, those microbes have to have nitrogen. This test, the next uh, parameter here is the water extractable organic nitrogen. That is the readily available nitrogen that the microbes can use to produce enzymes to break down carbon because they don't have the ability to digest that that uh, food within their guts like humans do so they secrete enzymes into the soil and enzymes are proteins proteins are amino acids and amino acid is nitrogen so this water extractable organic nitrogen is representative of that pool of nitrogen that those microbes can use to break down the carbon and to eat it's really important to have our c to n um, that carbon and nitrogen in balance. And we've seen some major changes with that um, parameter throughout the season. And uh, we talk about it as the carbon penalty. You can experience a carbon penalty from too much uh, residue out there, from cover crops are giving us some issues here and there. Um, so it's really important to understand your C to N ratio. Make sure that you're keeping your microbes happy, keeping the soil balanced. And that's really what this test boils down to. So. When you're looking at one of these tests, you want to look at that Solvita score. Better, the higher the score, the better. Um, that's the biological activity you have. And you want to maintain consistent biological activity throughout the year. Water extractable organic carbon, you also want high. That's the food for the microbes. You want that water extractable organic nitrogen to be um, at a ratio that's in balance and enough water extractable organic nitrogen that the microbes. Um, have that readily available and will not tap into the fertilizer that you put out there for the crop. If there's too much inorganic nitrogen and not enough organic nitrogen, the microbes will utilize this inorganic nitrogen 
and uh, thus it takes it away from the crop that you are wanting to fertilize. So with this test, we're getting an overall score here as well. And the score is calculated from the Solvita score, water extract, organic carbon, organic nitrogen, and C to N ratio. Gives you this overall score. And the score is basically just a way to monitor your progress, monitor changes over time. So that's essentially the uh, main things that I'm looking at when I'm getting these tests back. We've learned a lot by sampling multiple times throughout the year looking at changes in nutrient availability and changes in the forms of those nutrients. So changes in nutrient availability as driven by management practices. We're looking at things like this. This one is our second year rye cover crop test. So we're looking at things like management practices. We're looking at new products and evaluating products and practices effect on soil health. And then we're tying that information to weather and soil biological data, as well as other in-field parameters. Trying to tie together how are our nutrients changing throughout the year, then we deploy precision ag to better optimize nutrient utilization and uh, help farmers to be more profitable. So that's really what we're going with this test is utilizing it to benchmark soil health, to benchmark nutrients, and to help farmers to improve nutrient use efficiency by getting the microbes really to help them do it for us. Let us know if you have any questions. We'll send out more information about the Haney test soon. Thanks.